and welcome. Structure and diversification of the economy, geopolitics, trade priorities, legacy, history, and a host of other factors drive the exchange rate policies of countries. Taking into account the recent dual economic shock to oil exporting countries, OECs, of the fall in oil prices in the global slump caused by policies to curtail COVID-19, like the Great Lockdown and its implications. The need to revisit exchange rate policies in OECs to help offset exposure to such volatility takes greater importance. So what options for exchange rate policy can be played to address these issues? To answer all these questions, let's talk about the oil producer's dilemma with White Chief Partners Senior Manager, Dr. Kai Chan. Welcome, Dr. Chan. Thank you for having me, Aya. So uh, tell us, what economic, social or political factors affect countries in adopting pegged or floating exchange rate policy? Well, there are many factors that determine which type of exchange rate regime a country adopts. Uh, sometimes the one in place is not optimal, but change can be difficult to execute. Uh, fixed rates are helpful if the traded sector is large, as it gives more predictability in trade arrangements. However, a big drawback with fixed rates is that it makes monetary policy ineffectual, as the monetary policy of the pegging nation has to follow that of the nation which the rate is anchored to. Floating rates, on the other hand, are more favored for large complex economies and are generally better at insulating against external shocks. However, with floating rates, fiscal policy tends to have less efficacy. Politics might also enter the conversation. Uh, about the optimal uh, exchange rate regime, especially with regards to monetary unions or customs unions, which require a common currency or hard peg to work. And what is the rationale behind pegged exchange rates in oil exporting countries? Well, oil exporting countries often peg their currencies uh, to the US dollar, given that crude is priced in the greenback. Uh, this is especially true for oil exporters that are developing countries, as such economies tend to be less diversified, uh, that is complex uh, in their structure, and oil is their principal export. Uh, such countries also gain from importing the monetary credibility of the anchor country, in this case, uh, the United States. Uh, the currency match between revenues and expenses also helps countries avoid the uh, quote unquote original sin uh, of borrowing in a foreign currency. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in your opinion, uh, Dr. Chan, what lessons can oil exporting countries uh, derive from the double shot from the fall of oil prices and COVID-19 in terms of uh, exchange rate policies? Oil prices had already uh, slumped before COVID-19 and then they tanked when the world was forced to enter into a global lockdown. Uh, the global COVID depression, uh, which I call the COVID depression, uh, that the coronavirus precipitated meant that oil exporters faced a double whammy of low oil prices and depressed economic conditions that were not offset by favorable conditions abroad. Having an exchange rate pegged to the US dollar makes oil prices pro-cyclical as oil prices amplify throughout the economy. Uh, such countries might be better served with an exchange rate regime that acts as an automatic stabilizer to soften fluctuations in the economy caused by swings in the price of uh, oil. And such, one such example would be, for example, to include in the basket of currencies to which a, an, exchange, an economy may peg their uh, currency, something such as the uh, commodity of oil itself, uh, which would then act as a natural stabilizer uh, you know, when there are volatility or changes in the price of oil. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Chan, for all the uh, insightful information. I uh, very much appreciate you taking the time with me today. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.